Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So announcements first, in case you missed out my previous video link above, I have officially dropped the ENFP apparel range, link in the description below. So I spent a lot of time designing my personality themed merch in order that you can wear your personality with pride. And so I would really appreciate if you would check them out. Alright, so let's get started on this topic. Um, truth be told, I actually took multiple takes for this video, so it really speaks about INFJs and perfectionism, how I would, you know, strive to make sure that the lighting looks okay, my hair looks okay, my makeup looks fine, and just a lot of factors. Um, I just keep thinking, you know, whether my beginning is too short or too long and so on, so many factors to consider. And as a result, I actually had a massive delay in even having a start. So that's a really good picture of how INFJ perfectionism can look like. And I think a lot of types, especially the TE types, uh, my mom, for example, she's a ESTJ, and also um, like bosses in general, have a tendency to assume that INFJs are lazy which, I mean, I can understand, honestly, why they think that. Because I have definitely had problems with procrastination in the past. And also, um, even now, like, some of the writings have not been um, really written up to the amount of pages that I really should be doing. Um, I have written very little. And at actually, it's not because we are... Uh, intentionally lazy it's because we are afraid of like making the wrong step and that's also an issue not just in our um, work that we do it's also in like the way that we see our life in general like when it comes to friendships relationships um, also the healing work and um, you know, our careers or our personal projects, so many areas. Um, and also school for people who are still, you know, studying. So I'm going to break the video down to three areas in which we can better manage our own expectations and how that can um, counterintuitively lead to us being more productive and also actually self-acceptance is really the first step. It's not self-improvement, but self-acceptance, um, which is, again, another issue that INFJs have. So the first section that I'm going to talk about is the work area. So work can refer to school. It can refer to your own personal projects or your part-time stuff, side hustles. Um, in my case, the videos that I'm making and the blogs. And uh, secondly, it's the... Um, healing process, meaning like in terms of personal development, a lot of INFJs can be very impatient with the process. Like obviously it's good to get started to be aware of what you're struggling with and to look at videos and I guess learn from people. But it also takes time. So I think that's an issue that a lot of INFJs and maybe even other types face when it comes to doing self-improvement. You still have to start somewhere first and not be wanting to reach the goal so soon and the third one is in the area of friendships relationships just you know our interactions with people in general um so i'm gonna get started on the work aspects um so this can be you know when it comes to professional life or people um you know uh, INFJs tend to be very uh, stressed out, like easily stressed out by work or um, by their own deadlines um, or their own um, passion projects. And one reason is because we find it very difficult to really um, get started and when we after even after we start, we find it very difficult to continue because we are constantly thinking of what would the other person say? Um, is this written to the best that we can? And sometimes 
we almost can be like an escapist like we want to escape from this constant uh, worry that we have not done the best work and that can actually lead to the opposite um, effect ironically that we actually don't end up producing the best that we can because we delay the work um, till the last minute and then when we actually do it the quality is like lower than ever because we are so scared that we would be criticized um, sometimes we are scared that we would uh, misunderstand the other person which in my case like it's definitely speaks to you know learning to communicate our needs and our own questions more clearly before even beginning and just having this like doubts rather than you know starting a project and you know trying it out first and then you can actually edit it with the extra time that we have so it gets more polished so actually the more ideal route i would say is to get started either way and even if you feel like your work seems terrible at least you have the extra time to correct it later for like with feedback from other people it's like we just have to like do things first and then worry about the consequences later which is very unusual for our personality since ni is like very concerned about the future and it's just going to lead to a lot less time to produce quality work and definitely like setting alarms work uh, a lot more because INFJs if you don't have any I think external push sometimes uh, it can actually be quite um, like lack of structure I would say I, I think we still need a little bit of that even though INFJs are also uh, flexible people I think setting reminders setting alarms and really just getting to do it thinking about you know I need to use my extroverted sensing in important times you know even when it comes to making this video i tell myself this is the time uh to do it and, and i just have to do it like it doesn't really matter later on i can edit it like later on you know i can do whatever else i want and so at this time i have to just get started and um also when it comes to you know having especially like your own passion projects do not expect that you can immediately hit the targets that you want so for me i definitely have the issue of being impatient so i realized that with my own channel for example i have only been doing it um like f from this year onwards i started on 21st of february I mean that's not like the actual start date it was just the day that i decided to put in more effort into my channel and obviously i it takes time for me to like film and edit and so on so i actually wasn't very consistent in my channel in the past year because i had full-time uh jobs um i guess um expect more work from me so i kind of set this aside and so this year i brought it back which I guess it's actually a good thing since, you know, coronavirus can't really go out anyway. So um, I brought it back this year and I was so impatient. Like from the start, you know, I would look at the subscribers counts every day and be like, you know, why has it not reached the mark that I want it to reach? Um, why is it still lower than 100? You know, all this very, um, I guess, self-critical and also impatient um questions and it's really not about you know immediately seeing results because honestly that's not really um pro possible i mean it is possible but it's just you know we have to take steps and take time and so pu to put such pressure on ourselves is actually going to backfire because it is much more realistic to be more um patience with the process and to really learn from each step of the way you know from other youtubers from coaches from like advice from people online um we can definitely improve a lot and i think it is a good thing that we are always looking for ways to grow but at the same time you know 
just know that it takes time for everybody like you look at people who just started their channel even the famous ones their first video is not that great and you know initially they also have to go through that whole step-by-step -step process and it's actually quite enjoyable if you think about it that way like um, just having the steps you know having this uh, the people encourage you you know I got so much uh, good feedback and also good audience responses like I appreciate all my viewers even though my subscriber account has not reached a hundred but I project that it will um, very soon and so it really is encouraging to me when I think about the small steps and how you know it is actually a good thing if you move slowly because if you suddenly move up that it could be very overwhelming because of the amount of people and comments um, I don't think it is something that uh, would be easy to deal with because um, it's like you need a foundation first to understand what's going on and to you know increment incrementally improve and then when you get to you know a certain point when you are very confident when you know what you're doing it would I think it would just automatically grow by leaps and bounds you know so the beginner steps is always going to take time and that's okay um, like we have to kind of re achieve a balance I think like we have to have some level of responsibility for our projects um, by you know constantly seeking ways to improve it but at the same time we have to know that it is not going to be overnight success um, so that's very important to notice um, so that we can actually start to be more patient and um, for the second thing that I want to talk about it is um, regarding our healing work so I think in the last video I talked a lot about self-improvement and how it's important to you know know ourselves and to know our own flaws um, but at the same time I think it can be taken the wrong way by different people like some people might actually go to the other extreme and start being really self-critical and I know INFJs can be very impatient with our own development it's like oh I had this issue last year like why have not resolved um, why has it not been resolved and um, failing to notice the more human aspect that you know nobody's life is perfect a lot of people that I thought had their lives together do not have their lives together and this is not saying like okay so no one um, is at a good place like obviously there are people who are at a relatively like healthier place you know more I guess they have a direction in life and whatever but what I'm trying to say is honestly we are still working on, on a lot of things in our lives and that's normal like it's not normal to have a life that has no challenges so I think just looking at it from like a more understanding perspective when it comes to ourselves and knowing that you know okay maybe you have codependency issues for many years and you are still working on it but that's okay because things take time and you know there are small improvements along the way and it's fine to even relapse sometimes because I think it's normal for people to have um, slip up you know and I've seen like a lot of people whom I thought were so happy all the time have like really bad breakdowns so honestly it's not that perfect for anyone like it's not possible because we are human beings we are not like already um, uh, I don't know some kind of perfect beings we are obviously still um, like flawed people who are in this together I know it sounds very cliche but it's true like I used to think that extroverts have it easier um, which I guess maybe some of them do have it easier but I have also met extroverts who are actually having a very bad like emotional breakdown because they rely too much on the external like world for support because extroverts generally get a lot of their energy from people 
and so especially in this like time of the virus um, I realized that you know a lot of them actually have their own challenges to face because when there are not enough people to give them the emotional support it can be very uh, deeply unsettling for them and so really it's like we all have our own unique um, struggles and it's okay to take time it's okay to you know want to improve but at the same time know that you're not going to become perfect anytime soon and that's okay like imperfection is great as well we don't have to have the perfect temper we don't have to be like oh I never get angry or I never am sad like that's not natural you know that's not like an organic um so just taking notes that you know while we do value uh communication and you know working on things that we can improve on it's also important to trust the process and to enjoy the process um as difficult as it sounds it's actually more beneficial for us as a whole to be okay with the process and to remind ourselves that everyone else is also going through something most of the time. It's just that people don't show it to strangers. Um, and also, um, the third point is on our place in life. And that is, I guess, connected to the rest of the points. But it is um, related to you know our relationships um, as well as just our life direction, I think. Definitely a lot of INFJs as well as people in general just have this problem of thinking, you know, we should achieve something by the age of this. And then when we don't reach that goal, we are like, oh my gosh, what happened to my childhood dreams, you know? Why have I not been become like this famous filmmaker or, you know, this banker or lawyer, you know, or writer, whatever you are, you know, pining after I guess um by this age like why are my friends doing better uh not really because honestly again we don't really know our own like unique challenges a lot of friends may not have it that perfectly together either because I do know that a lot of friends of mine um, even though they may appear successful, they actually have uh, uncertainty over like, is this the career that I want? Because there is like a dentist friend of mine who realized that she actually doesn't really like looking at teeth that much. And that's a problem because if you are going to be a dentist for the rest of your life, um, you pretty much have to look that, at them every day. So she realized that she really does not like um, extracting teeth. So that can be a very huge issue. Um, so again, you know, career success is also not something that is so cut and dry. And just because you have not achieved like the peak of your success or, you know, what you want, um, like a very specific goal doesn't mean that you would not ever get it. Like we are all still alive and going. So, um, just be grateful that we still have time and take it as a form of motivation for us to do better and to just do more. Um, obviously not saying that we have to aim like by tomorrow we get what we want, but reminding ourselves that, you know, we cannot really project the future in like very certain terms. We have to also learn to let go. Um, like, you know, even when it comes to um, relationships, for example, like some people have this specific age, specific time that they want to have children. And I think that honestly, putting this kind of pressure on yourself is understandable. But at the same time, it's also dangerous because I have seen people who have jumped into marriages, you know, when they turn like 29. And then they have like even worse problems in their marriage because... When it comes to marriage, you have to think about the amount of responsibility you have. Like suddenly you have a partner, I mean a spouse, you have like children sometimes. I mean, not everyone have children, but sometimes you have children. And then you have so many people to take care of and so many people who um, are kind of 
I guess you, you guys are supposed to depend on each other. I mean, children probably cannot be independent. So there's just a lot more to actually consider. So if you are going to jump into something or if you are going to, you know, feel stressed because of a certain age problem, then once you get into it, it's going to be way more taxing and way more um, draining. And so it's really about trusting your own timeline. Um, as challenging as it sounds, you don't actually need to have a perfect relationship or friendship by a certain age. Like, yes, there, there are ideal situations where you can actually do a step-by-step, -step, I guess, um, progress towards. So, you know, if you want to have more friends, maybe attend more events on meetup.com. Uh, also, if you just want to meet people, like go for more events so that you can meet people. But really don't give yourself too much pressure to um, have like a certain goal. Like, oh, I have to have a friend from this event or I have to meet someone from this uh, social interaction. So really the best thing to do is to do stuff. But at the same time, remind yourself that... Um, you don't actually need to have perfection in like people, I mean, in the way you relate to people, especially at this age. I mean, I'm in my 20s. I, I don't know about you, but honestly, even if you're in your 50s, like a lot of people in your 50s also have midlife crisis. So you are definitely not alone if you feel like, you know, why is my relationship not going the way I want or why are my friends like not the amounts that I want. I used to think like, oh, I actually envision this girl squad, you know, perfect number <laughs> or, you know, a certain image of um, friends hanging out and it doesn't really always happen, especially when it comes to times where people are stressed out about the virus, people are stressed out about jobs and so on. Like obviously not everyone is going to have time to hang out and that's okay like you don't need to you know always have this perfect uh girl squad pictures or perfect like instagram worthy hangouts i mean honestly a lot of these are staged anyway like a lot of people are busy and that's okay like you don't have to always meet up and always have um like great conversations sometimes people can be in a more stressed out or busy time of their lives and i think just accepting that this is a part of life you know uh, like the whole such is life um quotes i don't know popular phrase just remember that um life is meant to be full of challenges and it's probably going to be like an uphill climb um like even if you resolve a certain amount of challenges new challenges are going to emerge and really the, the only way we can do is to be prepared and to be ready and to not be too hard on ourselves along the way because like i said we are all in it together and it's never an easy journey for anyone to um undertake and really to support each other and even if you feel like you don't have enough support at a certain time remember that it's probably because other people are also busy and having their own things so maybe like meet more people um or take some time to you know read or do things on your own and really just trusting that um we may not be perfect and our lives may not be perfect, but we can still um, go on and make things better. And that it's always within reach, like better is always within reach. That's also something that I have learned. Um, you don't have to reach like the best state, but better is within reach. So that's the end of my video. I hope you liked it. Um, whether you are INFJ or, or not, I hope that this speaks to all perfectionists out there needing a little bit of guide 
um, along the way. Honestly, I'm also learning. I'm also a work in progress. So this is just me sharing my own journey with you. And remember to like or subscribe. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.